Welcome, Ruth Sternberg, career coach. Um, she's going to lead today's Empower Hour workshop. Um, there's a bio in the chat. If you can't see it, let me know and I can send it out. Um, but I think when I sent out the invite, I attached Ruth's LinkedIn. Um, but Ruth, um, do you mind if I post that here as well? Oh, please. Okay. Post it. All right, and I will pass the floor to you. I'm trying to get a few more ladies in here that are having trouble getting in. Okay, I'll talk a little bit uh, in advance just to. So um, <clears throat> I work with people who are who are looking for jobs. Um, a lot of people come to me and want a new resume, but I explain to them that the resume is really just a tool in your marketing arsenal. Really, a job search is about a lot more than that, and it's mostly about connecting with people. If you can connect with your, with the hiring manager where you want to work and have a conversation, you're way ahead of most people, because that hiring manager makes that decision about what what positions will be open, you know, what the hiring timeline is. It's always a good idea to find the hiring manager and make a connection, as intimidating as that may seem. It's the best and direct, most direct path. So, and getting a referral is gold from people you know into a company. Um, that's a, a really great thing to do. Your LinkedIn profile should be optimized so that it explains exactly what you're all about, what you're good at, what you're known for, um, and should have a snappy headline that, that, that describes you in some way. It's a great professional picture. So, um, you know, do all those things at the minimum. But today, um, I'm going to talk about one of the most important things in your job search, and that is initially understanding what you're all about professionally. And I have, a, I'm, I actually have a PowerPoint that I'm going to go through as soon as as soon as you guys are ready for me to do that. <laughs> but I also wanted to let you know that. I, I really invite you to, to connect with me because on LinkedIn, because I will, if you write me and tell me, hey, I heard your presentation the other day, I have a question, I will definitely 100% answer your question. And if you're having a bad day around all this stuff, I will definitely find a, a time to get on the phone with you and, and talk to you for a few minutes because we all feel horribly by ourselves. and. I feel like we need to help each other and that's my mission in life. So that's why I'm here. So namaste as my friend Jeff Young likes to say. <laughs> so ladies, let me know when you think it's appropriate and I'll hit share or you can, I'll do a screen share and I'll get started. You ladies feel good about going ahead and beginning the meeting? Okay. All right, well, let's go to Whatever. screen share then. Okay. All right, um, slide show. Here we are. Yep. Okay, so <clears throat> we're gonna, we, I, let's see. I wanted to ask, um, you know, I know all of you are basically looking for work and that's why you're here. And um, how many of you find it really hard to get started? Like you just don't even know where to start. Anybody? Uh, Ruth, this is Danielle. I would, I would I, say I'm, I'm doing pretty well connecting with people and, and and reaching out to, 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 I guess, move up that ladder to get to the right people, right? Um, so I, I would think that, you know, as of right now, that's, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. That's now. great. That's fantastic. Wow. Using so LinkedIn no matter a whole what, lot. Steve, oh, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, what, you know, the most important thing, though, in getting started um, is really to understand what you're all about. Let's see. So I always start with this question. Why is it that employers advertise for positions in the first place? Well, I'll just answer that. 
it's because they have a problem they have to solve. You know, that, I mean, that's the only reason anyone hires. They want to make money. They want to save money. And they do that in a variety of ways. And, and you, you, that's why they need you. The hardest part of getting hired is trying to help the employer understand how you can do that for them. Some people just seem to be uh, really, really good at it. They seem to understand that they need to talk to the employer about fit. Mm -hmm. The most important thing about it, there, there's, there's a couple of things important about, about it getting hired. One of them is obviously you need to know what you're, you need to have the skills for the job, right? If it's an IT job, you need to obviously know IT. Otherwise, like, why would you apply, right? But in order to fit into that company, you also have to demonstrate that you can work with people and get and get things done and fit into the kind of environment that they have at that company. That's really what is the difference between different candidates. So understanding where you are is one of the most important things you can do even before you get started contacting each other. Because, and, and it's really important because employers don't have that special power where they can read minds. So you have to brag about yourself. And I hate to use the word brag, but because in our culture, it's this huge taboo, right? You're not supposed to brag. It's not good. And the thing is, women, and you all know this, we have a really hard time with this. Men, I'm sure you've heard this. Men will apply for a job if they're about 60% qualified, sometimes even less. No problem. They're just going to go go for it. Women, we wait until we're like 90% qualified. It's a little, it's, it's, it's not good because, first of all, no one is going to be a perfect fit for any job. There, and no job advertisement. These are ideal descriptions, and there's going to be nobody that fits every single thing. So if you feel like you could do the job, I say plunge ahead. So this is an exercise that I like to lead people through in order to get a better look at where they are. And so I always say to people, if you have a copy of your resume, have it in front of you and also another blank piece of paper. And I like to use copy paper, you know, or something that's that size, the like eight and a half by 11. Um, it doesn't matter if you have a notebook, you can do the same thing. And if you don't have your resume with you, we're just going to go through this anyway. And we're just going to think about the most recent role that you had or the one that you're in now. So the next thing you want to do is take your blank sheet of paper and fold it in half. And if you don't have one, if you have a notebook, you could just draw a line down the middle of one of the pages. Because the point is we're trying to have two columns here. I just think drawing a line, it, it's easy. I mean, you know, folding the paper because you open it up and it's like, there's a line right down the middle. So at the top of the left, you're going to put my roles. And at the top of the right, you're going to put pride points. Okay, on the left, you're going to number, you're going to, you're going to basically describe every, the roles that you've had professionally. And you're going to label each one, one, number one, number one, here's number two. And you're just going to write a little bit. You're just going to say, um, I managed uh, X number of people doing a particular job, or I was on the help desk at the, I was an IT person or whatever, whatever your role was, write down the name of it and just a couple you know, to remind yourself what it was you did. Then on the other side, on the left, on the right, you're going to, you're going to write down some great stuff that you did in that job, but you're going to use the same number that you used for that job. So you don't get mixed up and you remember what job it matches with, right? So <clears throat> you're going to ask yourself, well, what did I achieve in this position? What problems did I solve? Did I, what do they get compliments for? And it's a good exercise. I mean, just have some coffee or whatever you're drinking and sit down there and just, and just think about each job really carefully. Could you go back just a second, Rose, to sure. that slide? Thank you. I actually repeat these in the next slide. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah down here at the bottom. Yeah. Over here. Yeah. So, perfect. yeah. So what did I achieve in the position? What problems did I solve? 
um, what was I praised for? You know, like if you were going to brag about it, your job to your mom or your spouse or your best friend, what would you say about it? You should see what I did last year. You know, I we had this 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 problem um, in the budget and nobody could figure it out, and I figured it out, and we saved all this money. You know, or nobody in the office could get along, and I was the one that came up with a solution. You know, like I rock. You know what I mean? Also, you might want to consider other things that you've done, like your volunteer roles. You could put those in there too. If you're a volunteer for Dress for Success, if you're if you're a volunteer at your church, you know, it, any organizations you're involved in, because you probably did stuff. You were on a committee, you know, you volunteered in an event, you contributed in some way. These are skills that apply to a job too. And it's consider things like great reviews you had. Um, compliments and things people always say to you, you know, I'm sure many of us have experienced somebody um, just coming up to you and saying, you know, I appreciate you because of X, Y, and Z. Or you might get an email from somebody saying, oh my gosh, I cannot believe how good that meeting was today. Those ideas that you had were amazing. I can't wait to work on them. You know, um, maybe your boss has, has said some things about you like, oh, your strengths are this and this and this. And a lot of us are known for certain things that we don't really expect. Let me see. Like I was, I was working with this client who works in electronic health records and you know, her job is to transfer over a patient information to make it digital. That's great. You know, she works with doctors and medical practices. Okay. But the thing is she was always the one in the office who got along with people so well that she was able to get things done. She was scheduling for a medical practice and she, she was trying to make appointments for patients and she seemed to be the only one on her team that could get these patients scheduled because she made friends with all the schedulers and all the different offices and people in the office would get mad at her and say, how come you got your person in there? And she'd say, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I'm friends with these people. I ask about their kids. I she just has this intuitive way of working with people. She also got all of these doctors to comply with signing paperwork that needed to be signed before she could proceed with some of her records work. Like these doctors wouldn't come in. They would not come in. It was like there was this cart full of files. She got uh, these um, coupons from Dunkin' Donuts for coffee and donuts and the like, word got around that you could get a coupon for a donut if you went to sign your form and she got them all signed and I was like what I mean, of driven. <laughs> I mean she has this she's not an HR person but she has this intuitive way of working with people and everybody's got something like that you know and you don't think of it as something that that you would talk about in a job interview but my god it's it's huge so after you spend some time writing all this stuff down, you're going to fold the paper again, but you're going to fold it so that the words are on the outside. And then you're just going to turn the paper so that the only side you're looking at is the, is the pride point side. Now you're going to spend time reading all the stuff you wrote, because this is where you're going to discover all the things that I was just talking about. You're going to, you're going to look down there and you're going to go, Oh, I was recognized for this and this and this and look what I did and oh, so these are the kinds of things that I that I'm 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 have superpowers doing, and if you find yourself not having enough information, then think again because there's something. Believe me, I have yet to meet anybody that hasn't had a pattern of achievement in some way in their jobs, and a lot of times it's, it's skill related, but it's also people related because that's how we get things done. It's maybe you're great at systems. You're always the one that comes up with that process for doing something when nobody else can think of it and it always works, you know? There's always something. So then you're gonna do some highlighting on, on your own notes, maybe, maybe make some extra notes, you know, making a list of those things that you have discovered. What's my pattern? Oh, it's this, this, and this, and this. Isn't that interesting? 
So after you've uncovered all of that stuff for yourself, now I'm going to challenge you to make some sentences out of it. And you're just going to say, I do well when I am whatever it is I'm doing at work. And I'll give you a second to write that down. And it's repeated here. And then I'm most happy when I am, because think too about what, you know, usually those things that, that we're really great at and we get complimented for are things that make us happy too, right? That's super important. I get compliments when I'm, you know, whatever I'm doing. I always get compliments on that. You know, and I'm not talking about just your boss. I'm talking about the person that sits next to you, the person that you're on the committee, on the team with or on a committee with. People say that I am whatever it is. People say I'm a good listener. People say I am super organized and I get things done all the time, no matter what it is. Now, I'm going to challenge you after that to make it into a statement. And so I made up a fake statement about somebody to show you what the shape of that could look like. <clears throat> I do well when I'm waist deep in data looking for solutions that can improve processes. I'm most happy when I get to mentor other associates to understand the data and do better at their jobs. So this person is expressing how you know, she's a data geek, but she's got that supercharged, that supercharged power of working with people and being able to help people be the best they can be, you know, at the jobs that they're doing as well. I get the most compliments when I find data gaps and identify problems that nobody else can find. Again, this person's so great that not only do they understand how to use data, but this person can is like has eagle eyes on the data and immediately finds the problems. People tell me I'm the most helpful person in the department. Yeah, this person's got, she's got people coming up there all the time going, oh my God, I could not have done this without you. Now, this matters because first of all, if you understand what your own value is, not only can you talk about it intelligently, but you can also decide what job you want because you don't, a lot of people, especially now have that attitude that I just have to take a job. If somebody makes me an offer, I'm just going to say yes. Well, I understand and I get it because there's a point when of course you're running out of money and you need to go back to work. And I always say to people, there's absolutely nothing wrong with taking some kind of a job so you can bring some money in, then taking a breath, Mm -hmm. and looking for a career job mm -hmm. that you want to have. And it's good to do this because if you don't, you're going to find yourself leaving the job. You're either going to quit because you're not a good fit or you're going to get fired or something because, and it's not because you're a bad person. It's just because you didn't think through about how you might fit into the company, how, you know, mm -hmm. is this a place where I can be myself and really contribute? So that's really why this exercise matters. Again, you understand your power. You can see what kind of jobs you'd be happy doing. And it also informs so much of what you do with your materials for your job search because it's sort of the base for, for what you're gonna talk about. First of all, you've got your resume, right? And your LinkedIn. And those are places where you're going to expand on this information with details that prove that the things you're saying are true. That yes, I, I am good at this because I achieved this and this is what happened. And that's, that's where you take this apart and unpack it. But it's also, it also helps you answer that question. Tell me about yourself, which is, which is a question you're going to get in an interview and you're going to get it in a phone screen. And I think people ask it because first of all, they don't know how to start the conversation. So that seems like a logical thing to ask people, right? Well, hi, uh, so tell me about yourself, right? But I think, I think they also want to hear you talk a little bit to see like, what are you going to say? How do you present yourself? 
you know, they're just curious. They want, they kind of want to find out what kind of person you are. So again, I thought, well, what if that person that I just invented was in that situation? And this is where you take your power statement about yourself and you sort of advertise it, but you try to throw in there some kind of evidence that shows that you did something great because of all of these powers that you have. So I'll just show you. I'm a data analyst and I do well when I'm waist deep in data looking for solutions that can improve processes. During my career, I've driven thousands in savings by identifying elusive gaps, right? I've improved processes. I've actually done this stuff and I'm drawn to leading teams, which goes to the statement that, you know, I'm good at mentoring associates. I'm really good with people. And last year, my team found a considerable error that ended up saving the company around $25,000. So you're saying, I've got these technical skills. I've also got these soft skills, you know, these people skills. And it's, I, I do such a good job that I help my company. So that's what you want to tell people when you answer the question. And then you want to shut up. That, that is a ramble question. People ramble and ramble and ramble. Well, I went here and I went there. I went to college. I'm like, no. If it's on your resume, you probably don't need to go into a lot of detail about it. They saw it already. What you want is to draw their attention to the fact that you are, that you have, that you are, that you function well in, in the role and can achieve results. And this is what you're going to tell them about. There are other ways to answer this question too. I, I had a client who went into nonprofit work because he and his family had been at a toy store and had found all these discarded toys in a dumpster out in the back. And they had asked permission to distribute the toys, which were all like, un, they were all wrapped and everything in, bo in their original boxes. They wanted to take them to charities and, they, and the people said, yeah, go ahead. And he was so moved by the results of that that he decided to go work for a children's charity. I mean, that's an awesome story that says, I do this work because I want to help people. You know, and then also I'm really good at the work because he's in fundraising. So there are different ways to talk about yourself. But doing that base work where you're looking at what you've done with your career is really important because you're going to uncover some stuff in there that maybe you forgot about. So I'm inviting you to give this a try. And you're, you know, after we're done here, um, I'm also inviting you to contact me if you need help and you forgot how to do it, or you want it, you want to just tell me what is in your list so I can maybe help you review it a little. And now I'll answer your questions. Hi, Ruth, this is Danielle. Um, I want to, I just want to say thank you. Um, you definitely, you've laid this out very simply for those such as me that are over analysts and <laughs> sometimes <laughs> don't, can't grab these things. So I appreciate you um, providing us with the, with providing me with a simple solution to this. Um, and and I will say that I have actually I have an exploratory interview with um, with with someone on Tuesday, and I know that that tell me about yourself is is going to present itself. And so this is just another sign for me that I need to really um, hone in and, and to sharpen this for that meeting, and for and for other opportunities, obviously. But I think this is this is perfect. So I thank you. Do you, I mean, not that I want to put you on the spot, but yeah. what, what do you think you would want to say if somebody asked you that question, tell me about yourself? What, what are some of the things you might say about yourself? Uh, I would, some of my interests um, and some of my skills, possibly accomplishments as well. Yeah, I think you don't want to, you don't want to get too far off the subject. You know, you don't want to go you know, people start to talk about like, oh, I grew up here and I grew up there and I okay, you don't want to go into that stuff. No one cares about that. Not, not at this stage, you know. You want to keep it all on point mm -hmm. to, to talk about how you um, sort of fit into that industry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes, it does. Yeah. What's, tell me about one great thing that you've 
that you have done in your career? Something that you think is sort of a great example of who you are. Um, I, I like to help others. Um, I had an opportunity to take on some HR responsibilities and training others and I really enjoyed that. Um, and that's everything from, you know, testing to touring our facility um, uh, to, you know, current employees, you know, walking them through uh, the software, the, I want to say the employee database or software program any changes they need to make to their, you know, uh, withholdings. Um, I, I liked helping them in that aspect. Um, and, What's and your I, field? Is it HR? Uh, it's administrative. <laughs> I've been a, a, an administrative assistant for several years, but I've worked in various capacities. You know, man, administrative assistant means different things at different companies. True, um, true. And so in that particular company, that was just a small part of my role. Now, currently, I don't do that, but I had done that before. What's the, what's the, <clears throat> what role are you looking for? Um, looking for something in the uh, apparel product development or retail industry. Um, okay. I am, I've worked as in the apparel product development area of, or field of, um, fashion and retail, and I, I still have that passion, but I also have other skills that I've developed since working in the industry as in the product development field. So I'm looking at HR as well, um, learning and development possibly. Um, I work very well with data as well. So I can go several paths, you know. Okay, so when you're, I'm, I'm thinking rather rapidly here. Yeah. So when you're talking about yourself, I would formulate some kind of a, a little story that says, I've been working in, as an, in, in administration in various ways for the past X number of years. And what I've discovered is that, you know, I, I really like helping people understand systems and how they can uh, contribute to them to make a difference. And I've learned that, that I, I like these certain aspects of the industry. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I'm, that's why I was really excited about talking with you today because I wanted to learn more about, what you're doing that's kind of what i'd say yeah that's perfect yeah and you of course you have to look at that a little and put some details yeah in. no no that's perfect see, see that's how you're aiming you're kind of aiming at it like why am i here today right how how is this going to be about what you do as well as what i'm interested in mm-hmm mm -hmm. i gotta Just try to together time together remember, remember uh, ladies that looking that when you get hired, it isn't going to be about you. I, so many people say things to me like, well, I'm looking for a job where, I, where there's um, opportunity for advancement. And, you know, it's, and they end up telling me things that are more about what they're looking for. Now it's not unimportant what you're looking for because that helps you decide which roles you actually want to apply for based on the criteria. But, when you're talking to an employer, those aren't the things you're going to bring up. Even though they're, they're, even they're helping you pick a job that you might be interested in, you're not going to talk about that. Instead, you're going to talk about how you understand the problems, challenges, and goals of what they do. And you've been able to address those things in your own career. And here's some examples. Because you want them in their head to picture you doing the job, right? So that's why that's so important. Anybody else have a question? I don't, I, you know, we only have a few people on the call, but I'm absolutely willing to answer whatever you want. How do you um, market yourself for something that you have literally no experience for, uh, but like you want to do a career change. Like I, I am a coding analyst, like a medical billing and coding, um, but I want to get into life coaching. Um, so I'm doing like classes and stuff now, but you know, just uh, when I start applying for jobs or start trying to sell myself, I'm kind of, drawing a blank there on what 
you know, because I mean, I've been medical billing and coding for so many years. Is uh, I mean, how do you sell being a life coach? It's a totally different uh, field. It is. Okay. So when somebody wants to wants to switch to something that that is not completely related to what they've been doing, my advice is this: find people who are doing that already, and start talking to them. Set up a whole bunch of calls with people. Do it on Zoom, do it on the phone, start talking to people. And you're, all you're gonna do is talk to them about how they got to where they are. How, you know, how, why did you, how did you, were you able to go into that? What are, what are, so what do you think some of the things are that are most important about doing that job well? You know, you're just, all you're doing is just asking for information, you know? That's going to um, give you a lot of answers about what it is that's required to be successful in that profession. And from that, that's where you discover, oh, okay, if, if being able to listen to what people are saying and understand their needs and help them, I, I think I know how to do that. And in my job in, in medical coding, I've actually done that for people. You see how you transfer over the thinking from one thing to another? Right, um, like yeah, not and, necessarily the the actual um, like work experience, but kind of using life experience. Yeah, but see those those they they like to talk about those as being soft skills. I mean, people talk about that, but a skill is a skill, and I think listening and helping people is definitely a skill. It's a huge skill, and you probably have demonstrated that in your career, but you also may have done that in your roles outside of uh, paid work. Um, you may have been a volunteer doing something, uh, helping organize something. You may have, uh, you probably have done exactly this stuff. I mean, obviously, I bet you have, that's why you wanna be a life coach because you've seen your power in helping people this way. So the question to ask yourself is, well, how, what, What's my proof for having been able to do this so I know I'd be good at it? Then, of course, you can't always assume that's enough. Sometimes you also need training. You know, sometimes tr changing a field requires a little bit of training, and it sounds like that's what you're trying to do right now. So um, I'm not sure where it is you were trying to work. A lot of times life coaching is a thing that you do on your own, where you have your own practice. So, um, and that, of course, is a whole different subject, how to start a business and all that. But um, you just have to consider what it is they need and how you can deliver it to them. It, besides just, you know, I know how to code stuff. Because that's, that's just a detail. Do, am I, does this make sense? Yes. I think you're interviewing people is going to help you a lot. Because they're, they're going to tell you what you, what, they're going to answer this question for you. I think life coaches are great. They love to talk about what they do. They love to help other people. So yeah, you should get some great conversations going. Ruth, um, do you have any tips for, maybe you don't want a career change, but maybe you've had a bit of a burnout within your career, but you know, you wanna get re-energized and um, really get back into your current career. Do you have any tips? Well, just personally speaking, I, I think that you can always reinvigorate yourself where you are. Um, you can always um, have a chat with your boss and find out what projects you could be working on that could, that could reinvigorate your enthusiasm, right? You could find out what opportunities there may be in your own company for you to change to a different role. Um, you know, if you have a good boss, Hopefully that person will support you in wanting to do that, you know. There's a lot of different things you can do. Maybe take maybe just, you know, taking a some vacation time if you're owed could help you refresh a little bit. You know, I don't know. There that's you know, that's an interesting question. I it's not something I coach on. Um, but just from personal experience, I know that sometimes working on a different project can help. You know, volunteering to be on a committee at the company and do something can be super fun, you know, sometimes. 
changing it up. Everybody gets bored, right? And sometimes you know what you want your next opportunity to be. You know, you might see something going on at the company that you're like, oh God, I wish I could work on that project. You know, mm -hmm. maybe you can, if you um, ask about it. I was trying to look at the chat. I'm, I'm not, I'm not seeing it for some reason. Oh, chat. Do you have tips on getting your head, getting out of your own way? Like when you're on your way into that interview, um, I know I can be fully prepared and then I'll get in there like, mm, she didn't, I, I can't tell you about, mm, and I'm, mm, and I'm, again, I think that's something as women, <laughs> we definitely just, I, and I, I will say I was raised by my grandmother um, and she's like, ladies should be seen, they should not be heard, and you oh, don't God, brag, and that. you do this, and so I feel like I have a lot of those old ways just stuck in me, so I don't know how to toot my own horn and brag about myself, like, so how, how okay. would you suggest uh, that person prepares for an interview and can really, really go in the room and win that offer, that job offer? Okay. So there's a couple of different things. First of all, understanding that <clears throat> bragging is not really what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is explaining to another, to a, to a, a place, to, to an employer that has actually said, we need some help. We think you might be able to help us, right? You are actually telling them how you can help them. And if you don't do it, it's, I, th I think you're depriving them of that opportunity to know some way that they, their company could be better because you've done it before and they wouldn't have asked you to come in and talk to them if they didn't believe in you, okay? They want you to tell them. That's why they asked you to come in. Remember that. The other thing is be prepared for your interviews. Do research on the company understand what do they do, why they do it, and read, read articles about them. Read in business first, read in the dispatch. Look at the publications that are in that industry. For instance, life coaching, they probably have a whole bunch of different publications that deal with that field. And you know, you can learn about that. If you're, if you're working at a company um, in, I don't know, manufacturing or banking, you could that that company may have been mentioned somewhere um, in an article in some kind of journal or magazine about the field. You can the Columbus Public Library has re research resources um, on their website. If you're a cardholder, um, you can or if you're not, you can get in there and look up different new um, publications and research them right from your desk at home. It's pretty great. Um, and so and then also on their websites they've got. Um, and usually have some kind of a news section, you know, um, that has all their PR. So it has things they've written about themselves. They might have white papers, which are basically, you know, some of you may know that a white paper is like a case study about something the company did to help somebody. You, you know, there's all kinds of ways to find out what the company is all about and what they're trying to work on. Okay. That gives you an opportunity to prepare by being able to write down three or four things that you know they need or are working on and then processing with yourself oh I, I can do that I've done something kind of like that and then figure out what are the stories you're gonna tell them to show them that it's true and if you go in there being able to talk about how you solved a problem and what and what the outcome was for the company how you recovered from something that didn't quite work right because they're going to ask you about that. And everyone has those experiences. Nothing is perfect from the beginning. And if you can tell them what the situation was, how we fixed it, and how from here on in it worked great. Um, that's, those are the biggies. I think if you do that, and plus, if you practice, you'll be better prepared. People think, well, I can interview because you know, I talk to people every day. Yeah, but you do an interview every day. How, how often do you do it? You do it like once, once every three years. I mean, you haven't really practiced a lot. And so being able to sit with another person and you say, oh, can I, 
can I just um, pretend like you're interviewing me? You could even write the questions down for them. Um, uh, the internet is full of examples of good interview questions. And you could just say, here's a list. I want you to ask me these. And I want you to tell me if I'm answering the question and if I'm talking too long, right? You want to keep your answers to three to five sentences and be quiet. Here's, here's a situation. Here's what I ha we had to do to solve it. Here's what we did. Here's what happened. Be quiet. They call it the STAR method. And those of you, you may have had coaching around this already. You know, situation, task, activity, result. Which can be hard to remember sometimes. I just say, well, what happened and what did, I, what, what did, what did we do to address it and like, what was the outcome? I think if you just understand that, that they're just looking for you to show how you use both your technical and people skills to solve problems, then you should be completely fine because you will know going in what you're going to talk about and you just talk about it. Does that help? Very helpful. Very helpful. Any other questions? What time is it? Huh. 1.45. You guys might as well suck information out of me because here I am. <laughs> <clears throat> and I would love to, I'd love to present uh, for Dress for Success in the future too. So if That's there are so other nice. topics that you think would be great, you just tell me, you know, write to me and tell me what they are and let's see if we can put something together. Okay. I have a quick question. I, I also oh, hmm? Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off there, Ruth. <laughs> I had a quick okay. question for you. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so I had mentioned that um, I have an exploratory um, interview. Um, it's not really an interview. It's an exploratory meeting, right? Schedule. That's great. That's, um, it's, a great and, it's a great way to meet people. And, yes. uh, and I've... I've I've done, I've had exploratory in there. I've, I've done them previously and um, I am, I'm a little nervous about this one just because of the, 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 the individual that I'm speaking with her, her stature in the company. Um, and so, um, uh, so yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I almost, I'm taking it as, I'm using it as a, uh, I'm trying to approach it very calmly, um, as I, I had a few weeks ago or a month ago when I had an exploratory interview with a young lady, and it was a great, very, very um, cordial conversation. But uh, like I said, with this, the young lady stature in this company, um, I'm getting a little nervous, and, and I, I don't know. I just feel like I need to share that. Oh, I, I get it. <clears throat> it's really... I, I find in these kind of situations, when you're not there and you're imagining it, yes. it seems like this giant big thing. <laughs> yeah. But as soon as you meet the person, yeah, completely disappears. Because the person yeah. will go, oh, Danielle, it's so great to meet you. You want some coffee? Yeah. And right away, you're like, oh, there, because she's a person. Yeah. Just like you. Yeah. And she agreed to meet, she agreed to meet with you, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't, I think it's going to be fine. Yeah. And I think knowing some things about her going in will help you too. Do some yeah. research on her. Find out what board she's on, what activity she's involved in. Um, they love to talk about themselves. They yeah. love to ask. So if you were to go in there and break the ice by saying, oh, you know what? I just saw an article about you, you know, or I just saw that you're involved in X project. That is so great. Well, how's that going? That will open up an entire conversation. Mm -hmm. She'll tell you, and then you'll, and then you can, you can dovetail on that by saying, "Oh yeah, you know what? I'm so interested in that. You know, I, in the work that I've been doing, I meet so many different kinds of people, and I, I've gotten to know them on different levels, and just the things that you know, you can just, you can just really get into a great conversation that way." Okay. But I would definitely go in there prepared to know what it is you want to find out as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
so yeah. that it doesn't meander all over the place and you're mm -hmm. not because really it's your meeting mm -hmm. remember that exactly and i would also say if you if you haven't already done this or thought of this um that after it's over um, not only should you quickly send her an email and thank her, but you should write her a note and mail it to her. Mm -hmm. So it's really super important to get her business card or some, um, her, you know, the stuff that would be on her business card mm -hmm. so that you can actually, you know, cause this is, is this virtual? Yes. Yeah. So you definitely want to get her contact information. So you can send her something, you know, a nice note on a pretty note card and people, God, don't you love to get stuff in the mail? Because nobody does anymore. Right? Mm -hmm. It's so exciting to get a card. You're just like, oh, someone sent me a card, you know? Yes, agreed, agreed. And the thing about sending a physical card to somebody is they have it. That means they put, they've got it on their desk. Some people have a, have you ever noticed people have shelves of things that they've received or whatever? Your card could be up there. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be forgotten. Awesome. Thank you. And then so my fo my follow up for a follow up with people like that. Yeah. I also would every so often, um, you know, whenever you see this person mentioned somewhere or there's an opportunity to say congratulations, good job that you send an email. Not too often, but if you run across an article or some piece of information that you want to share, you could always write her and go, hey, I just wanted to say hello. And and see how you're doing. I was thinking about you because I saw this and I thought you might be interested in it. Have a great day and just send her the link. Cool. Which by the way is a great strategy, you know, when you're dealing with a hiring manager that you're, that you're having a relationship with and there's a process going on. It's always nice to, you know, check in with people, show that you're interested in their company and what they're doing and, you know, these are great tips. Great tips. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, people don't think about doing this. They think like, well, I talked to him. Okay, now I'm going to wait. Uh huh. But think about it for a minute. Some of you ladies have probably mentored other people over the years. You know, whether it's a younger person or or a colleague. Do you even like you do it and you're glad to do it? But do you actually remember this person if you never hear from them again? Right. right. You know, probably it's, it's really kind of nice to hear back from people once in a while, right? Great words of advice. Thank you so much, Ruth. Anytime. Ruth, hi, this is Emily. Hi. And thank you for your time today. It's invaluable sure. to us. Um, I have a, a wide, a vast background of lots of different things, uh, administrative assistant, um, and lots and lots of retail experience, which opened my eyes to... <laughs> human beings and how temperamental they can be. Yeah. And um, <laughs> then I had a 20 year uh, career as a medical transcriptionist and having my own business with that. And now I want to, and, and I've been a nurse aide for six years now and um, private pay with a gentleman in Muirfield. And it's, it's a really good gig. <laughs> But I, I want to go into nursing and, and further my education in medicine. Um, how do I, what are your thoughts about resume and when you're, when you have that different, different background like I do, what are your thoughts about a resume and um, you keep it solely medical? I have a lot of volunteer work helping, helping folks. Uh, especially the elderly. Um, well, also. okay. My thought, here's my, here's my immediate response. You got to pick something you're aiming at on your resume. <clears throat> the days of having a general resume are gone and dead. Okay. You, you need to know what role it is you want with this resume. And you need to understand what they're asking for. And then you have to show it in your resume that you have that. That's, okay. the, that's the short answer. Um, now, there are a lot of different ways to spin your experience. And 
I was, I was just talking about this a few minutes ago when I was saying that if you like in the life coach situation, just because you were a medical coder doesn't mean you didn't help people the way a life coach does in some similar kind of scenarios. So you've already been in the medical field. So when you read the requirements of the posting, and more importantly, you talk to someone, because I always say, don't apply blind, always try to talk to someone in that company. You're going you're gonna to have a nice little list of things that they, that they need. And you're going to be able to go through each of your roles that you've had, and you're going to be able to match them in some way, you know? you just need to know what it is, what it is they need so that you can look through all your experience and tell them you have it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah. You're not, you your resume that, is not, it's not, it's not encyclopedic. You're not in the resume. Your goal is not to tell everything you've ever done. Your goal, it's a, it's a marketing document that says, um, you, you need a great nurse for this job. Well, you know, or a great medical professional, and you're looking for these things, well, here's my summary that says, that describes that I do all this. And now I'm going to, I've cherry picked the things in my career that are going to knock your socks off, that are going to tell you that there are these things you need. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. <laughs> how do you, how do you really get down to the bottom of what they're looking for by looking at their descriptive words? I mean, well, you don't. I mean, you start there. You start there. Okay. But you also need to talk to somebody. Um, I always say to people, if you're looking in a certain company, go on, start with LinkedIn. Look at the, you know how you can look up companies and it'll tell you like, look at all 5,332 employees. Have you ever done that? I, I don't have much experience with LinkedIn at all. In fact, yeah, I don't have very many contacts at all. Well, now's the time to build that. So okay. um, you go on there and you do some research. You can look companies up. And so oh, okay. it'll, it'll, it'll tell you how many, you know, it'll say whoever's on LinkedIn will be listed. And you can just start reaching out to people with a nice introductory note and just say, um, oh, I see that you've, you know, you're working in this field, you know, I would love to talk to you because um, we don't know each other and, you know, but I, but I see that you're doing this work and I, I'm looking to learn a little bit more. Um, would you be open to connecting? And then when the person connects, hopefully they will, but remember, not everybody looks at their LinkedIn, so don't take it personally. Um, <laughs> you know, if you do enough of these, you'll get somebody. Um, okay. Just, just make some, make friends with them, you know, over, you know, chat with them a little bit, ask them about, oh. oh my gosh, how long have you been working for Cardinal Health or Mount Carmel or whatever it is, you know, and they'll tell you and you'll say, oh, that's really neat. You know, I've been doing X and Y and I'm sort of interested in that field. Like, how did you get involved with that? Could we hop on the phone and talk? And the person might say, yeah, sure. I, I, how about tonight? You know, oh, and that's okay. That, yeah. Then as you, as you talk to people, that's how you start getting inside information about the company a little bit. Because then, then, then they, they start telling you, I love working here because the people are great or they could tell you, well, you know, just between you and you and me and the, and the lamppost, <laughs> I, I really like my department because of this and this and this. Like you start getting all this. Oh gosh. That's, learn. that's Not only yeah, do you yeah. learn that stuff, but you also learn about this technical stuff like, oh my God, we're transferring over to this new system and it's blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, do we know it? Like, this is the kind of stuff that helps you not only put things in your resume that can be helpful, but they also helps you to write a letter to go with your resume to the hiring manager that says, you know what, I understand that you guys are doing an X and, and I, I, I know about that because I've been doing that. Here's an example. I'm really interested in, in, in learning more about what you're all about. Could we chat? This is what you wow. do. It's not about I'm submitting a resume and waiting. I'm submitting it like no one's going to notice you. You got to. This is what I always tell people. You got to get in there and meet people. And it's not a quick process. I'm not going to lie to you. But it, but if you do it and you start a spreadsheet and you just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep you're going to contacts are going to go like this and you're going to learn wow. so much stuff. 
And also, if there's a professional organization in that field, find out when their next event is and go or sign up. See what the requirements are to become a member. Volunteer for a committee. Like everybody, like let's dress for successes like that too. You know, you get involved and there's committees. And if you want to get known, yeah. be on a committee and everybody meets you and they see what you can do and they know your name and they know all about you. Like this is what you have to do. Yes, of course, I've heard about the follow-up handwritten note, which I think is wonderful. But your suggestion as to how to continue communicating with that person is amazing. I mean, I've never heard anyone say that. And that is so good. Well, I say, that ask yourself, so right, ask yourself, like, if you were the person that someone was communicating with, how would you want to be communicated with? And you get to be a certain yeah. age. And you've already done it. You've already mentored people. You've already, you know, remember, this isn't, this is not, looking for a job is not a process of, oh, please give me a job. I'm begging you for a job. No, 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 no. This is a process of a, an employer is going, okay, we need some help with some stuff. And you're going to go, <laughs> um, I can do it. Here I am. Uh, let me, let me, I'd love to talk to you about it. Cause I have some, I have some ideas. It's, 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 it's like I said, you're depriving them. If you don't share, why would you hold back your, you know, power from someone that could help that you could help. Right. And you get to shop for them too. You know, during, don't forget, you can always ask questions about the company during the interview. You want to know things. This is not, this is not about I'll take what I can get. You have some power here too. So and maybe maybe you wouldn't be hired for that position, but they'll keep you in mind for a future position if that's you right. continue and to communicate with them. That's right. And you have to make that known too. I mean, if you're in an interview, the worst thing you can do is not ask for the job. People leave the interview, thank you, shake hands, and they never ask for the job. You have to ask for the job. You have to say. So, uh, wow, this sounds like a great position. I'm super interested. What are the next steps? That's great. Right. That is great, Ruth. That is great. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's hard. It is really hard. I mean, you know, was it Bridget who was saying it's hard for women to, to speak up? Well, we got to get over ourselves people <laughs> because <laughs> no one's going to do it if we don't do it. And I'm also, I'm also What's a member the name of that video. <laughs> um, have you guys heard about Weld women for economic and leadership development? I'm a Weld member. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great organization because the whole aim of that group is to lift women up professionally. That's the aim of the group. And if you can, they're having a lot of free stuff right now. If you get on weld. I think it's was it weld. Oh, yes. Look up weld on um, on on the internet. You're gonna and and just find out what they have. They have so many free sessions right now because of the pandemic. Register for something because they've got tons of content and tons and and all the women in weld, the really active women, a lot of executives in that group. There's people in law firms, higher ups from nationwide. I mean, it's a great group to, to try to be involved with because you're going to meet a lot of women that can help you and mentor you. And that, that's really important, super important. What time are we up to here? Oh, we're past two. We are past two. Are you going to well, take here's the my final email. question? Here's my email, you guys. So write it okay. down. And <clears throat> just email me if you connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Ruth, Bridget, Melissa, Emily. I got to head back to work, but I just want to say thank you, ladies, so much. I'm so glad that I jumped on today. Um, nice to see you, Danielle. Good luck, Danielle. Yes. You're going to kill it. You're going to do it. All right. I can feel it. Take care, guys. Good luck, Danielle.
Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Ruth. I will be reaching out with a future date for you to come back and engage. Awesome. Also, I forgot to mention, darn it, Danielle left. Um, every Wednesday, I'm doing an open job networking for free on Zoom. Every Wednesday at noon. And oh, if I send, Bridget, if I send you information about that, could you send it out to the group, to the Dress for Success, or put it on the closed site? Um, the information Absolutely. To sign up for that. Please I'll email send it to, to me. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. This has been great. What a great group. I can't oh, wait to talk to you again. Yes. I appreciate you, Ruth. Thank you. I appreciate all the information. You. you can do this. I promise you. <laughs> all right. You. We can, ladies, especially together. Yes. yes. Oh, beautiful weekend. You too. Thank you. Bye. Have a beautiful Mother's oh. Day. Oh, oh yes. Happy Mother's Day. Happy <laughs> Mother's Day. All right. Signing off. Bye. Bye.